All right, everyone, welcome back to another tuning video here in Forza Horizon 5 on the channel. Today, March 24th, there is a R35 Nismo GTR that just got put in, and it is awesome. Uh, I decided, first things first, let's drive it to the track uh, at the festival and do a couple laps around there. So we did. I noticed it sounded really good, so I figured later we should probably take it to the tunnel. As we were doing our laps around the festival circuit, I decided it was a pretty good car. Right off the bat, I thought it was all right. It needs some tuning, of course, so we put it all the way up to the top S1, which is to come. Uh, after that, we went to the tunnel because I wanted to see what it sounded like, and I decided that this car is one of the best-looking cars in the game, and it also sounds probably the best out of all the other cars. I can't think of another one that I prefer the sound of. Now let me show you what we did for upgrades. All right, originally I screwed up and I went for a no wide body build because I think it looks better without the wide body. I built this car fully without the wide body and then found out when you put the wide body on it, it lowers the performance index points. So whatever. And also now I'm noticing if you take it off, it lowers your performance index points again. I don't know, it's weird. Anyway, so wide body first and then it comes with a front down force splitter on the front of the wide body so you don't have to do that we put the uh, Forza wing on it because I think that one looks ugly and this is as close to the original as you could get I wish you could adjust with the original because it looks better but whatever we're not doing the hood I don't like the carbon fiber hood we went for fully upgraded tires as wide as they will go in both the front and the back which originally I ended up not doing but it seems to do better this way anyway we went for a 7-speed or a 6-speed race transmission and race diff. The brakes are already as big as they get. As you can see, they are massive. We went for the race suspension, race front and rear anti-roll bars. We did not put the roll cage in it, and we I think we made it lighter. Did we make it lighter? We did not, so we haven't touched the lightness. And then we went for power. We no, no intake, uh, fuel system all the way, no ignition, the exhaust is no, the cams are all the way up, the valves are all the way up, I believe nothing else is upgraded. Displacement, oh, so the compression and the pistons are all the way up, the turbos are left alone, I wish, but that takes you way too high in the horsepower. Didn't touch the intercooler or the cooling, and then we upped the flywheel all the way, and that puts you right at 900. Also, having looked through all of the designs, I decided that we are going to keep the original colors. I do quite like that black and green one, but I think we're just going to leave it straight black because it looks way better. After that, we went, did a little bit of tuning with it. It took me like an hour to fiddle with it. It, uh, it wasn't half bad. It definitely could have used some help over what it was, and it took me quite a while to figure out why it was being so like understeery, even though obviously it's an all-wheel drive. It needs a little bit of help. But just the way the, the suspension was set up was kind of strange. So we basically just put it to what I normally do. Now I'm going to show you what my best lap ended up being. We were just below a minute, which is pretty good for an S1 car. But overall, I think the car is pretty good. It looks good. It sounds good. It's pretty quick. It handles really well. And it's just a really sick looking car. And the sound of it 
awesome. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is a little bit different of a video, but I'm trying it out. We'll see if I like it and continue to do it in the future. So have a great rest of your day.